For 51 years, the Vermont Commission on Women, an independent, nonpartisan state commission, has worked to advance rights and opportunities for women and girls in Vermont. I'm Eric Clemens for Comcast Newsmakers at Champlain College in Burlington. The executive director of the Vermont Commission on Women, Carrie Brown, is on set with me now. Carrie, welcome to the program. Thank you so much. First things first here, would you explain the composition and the work of the commission for us? Sure. The commission is a group of 16 volunteer members who are appointed by the governor and the speaker of the house, the Senate Committee on Committees, the Vermont Democratic Party and the Republican Party with an eye towards political diversity. And they come from all over the state and they serve for four year terms. And our general mission is to provide advice and counsel to the executive and legislative branches. And we do this through public education and through an information and referral service and through working with partners around the state. What has Vermont done recently to address equal pay issues for women? Well, equal pay for women is an issue we've been working on since 1964 when we started. Women in Vermont who work full-time make about 82 cents on the dollar that men who are working full-time make. Right. If you look at all people working, including part-time, it goes down to about 76 cents. It's even lower because more women are working part-time. So Vermont um, recently passed a pretty comprehensive equal pay law that strengthened our protections for people making equal pay for equal work, as well as we were the first state in the country to pass the right to request flexible working arrangements. So that means that any employee can ask their employer for a change in their work schedule to accommodate childcare schedules, for instance, or care for an elderly parent, for mm -hmm. instance. We also protect people who in, um, inquire about each other's wages. It's legal to disclose your own wages, but we added on to that to make it legal to ask your coworkers about how much they make so that you know if you're getting paid the same or less than other people. The commission has received recently a federal grant from the U.S. Department of Labor Women's Bureau examining the feasibility of developing a statewide paid family leave program here in Vermont. Uh, what's the goal of that study? Well, that study is to determine if and how we might have a paid family and medical leave program in Vermont. So right now, many employees are able to take unpaid time off when they have a baby, for instance, or if they have a, a relative who's in an accident and they need to take care of them long term. But most people who take that time off don't get paid for it, which means that for many people it's just not accessible. And so we're looking at a variety of structures that might make it possible in Vermont and to find out what would actually work here. How does the Vermont Commission work to improve conditions for women inmates at Vermont's only women's prison, the Chittenden Regional Correctional Facility? Well, we pay special attention to the women who are incarcerated. We only have one facility, as you say, and we need to make sure that the needs of the women who are in the correctional system are being looked out for because they are different than the needs of men. And we have, um, in recent years, we had seen the number of women incarcerated go up. It has stabilized recently, but it's not going down significantly, and we would like to see that. So we hold listening forums within the facility. We communicate directly with inmates, and we also work collaboratively with partners who are providing services both inside the facility and outside to help when they come out in their transition back into the community. Now the VCW has established many critical partnerships including your advisory council. How do these partners inform your work? We have an advisory council of 25 organizations that are concerned with improving conditions for women and girls in Vermont. And they come to our meetings and they work with us on various projects. We had a, an event last week, a summit on women's economic security. And many of our advisory council partners worked with us on that as speakers and helping with organizing. And we have two meetings a year that are specifically for them to share their programmatic goals with us, as well as to share their legislative agendas with us. The Vermont Commission also offers an information and referral service. Tell us how this service is uh, different from others. Sure, this is a way that women or anybody who is experiencing problems that they can't find solutions for elsewhere, they can call us and we can talk with them about what they might be able to do to resolve their problems. So we have a very extensive resource directory, which is all online as well. But when they call us, we can help them find the most local and the most appropriate resource that can help them answer their questions. Carrie, thanks so much for being with us on the program today. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for watching this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Eric Clemens. We'll see you next time.